Hello and welcome to Lou TV's special championship preview night. And tonight I am joined Dan Bannon from Loud and Proud Podcast by Ogie Harmon, Stephen Yore, Carl O'Connor and Fran McCullough. And each and every one of them is going to go through the three finals that's on this weekend. But starting first, we're going to get stuck in to the junior final, the Anglo Printers Loud Junior Championship final between Nathan Barra and Landlier. Lads, thanks very much for coming along. We've been one of the special few that's seen a lot of games this year. We haven't had to have a ticket. We haven't had to go through the ditches or hide in boots of cars. So, Ogie, I'll start with yourself. You've seen a lot of Landlier who are coming in as strong favourites on Saturday at two o'clock. What, what's your thoughts? Do you think they're still the team to beat? Um, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know if I'd say strong favourites. I'd say favourites. Um, Finn Barr's coming out from intermediate. Very good team. Um, I, I would say, yeah, I'd say favourites, yeah, and rightly so. Um, I think they have, I think they have a system in place. And I think it actually lends itself to playing the Finn Barr's. So, everybody, Willy Woods, he occupies people. Um, uh, what do you call him, the 40? Uh, Liam Shevlin, Shevlin, Connor Osborne. Yeah. Connor Osborne, excuse me, Connor Osborne. Uh, they, I think they've got a system in place that already lends itself without having to make too many alterations to try to mark them lads. And then at the other end, they've got people who can score. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think it's, it makes for an exciting final. Yeah, and it, I still think it'd be close though. It's no, yeah. it's no gimme. Um, it's no. There's no rubber stamp on this one. It's no. still up for grabs. We'll dig deeper into it now as we go on. Stephen, you've seen the Finn Bars. Mm. You've seen them really up close last yeah. weekend in the semi final. And Sorry, a couple yeah, of games early on, you, you, you covered the final as well against the Fierce. Do they have the attack or the patience in their attack to stifle uh, well, the Lanlier defensive I, approach? Well, as, as we said before, Dan, you know, like it's. Lanlio have a good system based team, you know, they have a good defensive you know, system and structure about them. They have quality, Dan, you know, William Woods, I mean, he struck 14 points, I think, in the quarter final against, against the Pierce, 14 of the 19 points that the Finbar scored. And, you know, he had, a, he had a big tally as well in the semi final win over, over the Mitchells. Um, and Liam Shevlin as well, um, big addition to them of course this year, Dan, coming yeah. from, from the Dreadnoughts and, and Connor Osborne as well. You have the likes of Oman Osborne there, uh, coming in off the bench. I, I think there's scores in them, Dan. I don't think they should be written off as, as much as, as they are. Obviously, you know, you mentioned probably Dunley have strong favourites for the game, but as we said, I wouldn't label them strong favourites. I would just, I, I, I would fancy Dunley to do the job in the day, but I, I think it could be closer than. What's Dunley. What's Liam Shevlin's impact been like since he's come back down to he, that he's, level? He's gone on to an awful lot of ball, Dan. You know, he, he, he looks for the ball. You know, he doesn't shy away from it. Um, and I think he's, you know, linking up with the likes of Osborne inside there and, and William Woods as well. Um, he, he's a ball winner, uh, Dan. And I think, um, you know, I think he adds an awful lot to the Finbar's team. This year, I think he's been a great addition to them. Yeah, because yeah. like we've probably mentioned in commentary, they've lost mm. a lot of players. Yeah, you see Brian Shark, he's gone to the Pearce. Yeah. You see Bernard Osborne gone to the O'Connells, and then mm -hmm. a couple of others. Chris McLean hasn't come back. The two Lenahans. Mm. So there's a bit of transition there. Yeah. But on the other hand, Lanlier Ogie, you're uh, Lanlier spokesperson tonight, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Default. Yeah. They, they they have been. The opposite of being in transition. They've been building quite nicely, quite steadily. There's a bit of cohesion there. Mm. This past couple of years, remember last year, they were so unlucky to lose out in the semi final to the Frencher winners, yeah. Roach. And yeah, I think they're quite set. Yeah. yeah. They're quite a set in team. Um, the only interruption you'd say were the injuries early on in the year. Mm. But they've been gradually getting these players back at the right time. Um, and because they've been there for the previous year or two, it hasn't really unsettled them overly, you know. So in the group stages, really they're out now. Only key forward was Killian Gregory. They didn't need anyone else to beat. Uh, You've been really impressed with Killian Gregory. Yes, um, I was going to look. Well, I've now, so I might as well say I'm the chairperson for the Killian Gregory. Uh, I fan club. Fan I think club. he's class. Um, but he's uh, no, he is. He's a great player. He's a great player. Um, he's brilliant for them, and he's a real talisman for them. And. Uh, He's a get-out ball, relieves pressure from the fence, links play, he scores, he has all those strings to his ball in a corner forward position. And he can come out, I've seen him coming out as far as midfield, tackling people and harassing and getting back in again then, you know. So, um, I don't know, I just go back to the system, I think just 
without making too many changes or alterations, they've got a system in place, I think, that's going to, just naturally, it's going to stifle them. It's going to stifle the Finbars. I watched it, the Mitchells game, and they, they had started something similar. They had multiple players in defence, yeah. you know, leaving only a few forwards up front. And, and, and that's what Willie, Willie Woods does to you. He requires marking, as does Osborne. So I think they did that. But when I look back at it, they went long with a lot of kickouts. You know, so they're right. in a position of strength where they have maybe eight, nine defenders. They kicked it over them and they went long to a position where the Finbars were strong. Yeah, you know? yeah. And then when they did go short, they tried to go from the back to the front with only two, two balls. He didn't let the players get out and support, and they just kept coming back in. I just don't see that with, with Landlier. I, they, they can mix the, the kickers, yeah, you know, yeah. and they will mix the kickers. So, you know, they can't, they can't think it's all going to be short. Uh, the Finbars won't think it's always going to be short kickers either. It won't be. I just, I thought the Mitchells helped the Finbars in that regard, you know, and I don't think. I don't, don't see Landier doing that. That's not to say they'll, they'll yeah. walk away with it or anything like that, but they just have that system, I think, that will, it lends themselves to, without doing too much. Gives them a big advantage. Yeah, yeah. you've seen yeah. that, you've seen that with the Mitchells, and we, we've actually heard it in commentary when they played, was it, no, it doesn't play, in the Piercy, where you could hear them vocally. That's one of the advantages this year of having, like, no spectators at yeah. the game. You can hear the manager, yeah. hear the instruction, and Noel Litchfield, he's, he was training the Mitchells this year, he was saying, protect the D, protect the D. And how did uh, how did Thor break down that D? Against the Mitchells? Yeah. I think the quality shone inside with, with Woods, with Osborne. I think Owen Osborne made a massive impact coming off the bench. Okay, though. right. Yeah, a massive impact off the bench. He got onto an awful lot of ball. I think he scored a point as well. He did, yeah. Yeah, so um, I, I just think the Finn Bowers, and look, the Mitchells have had a very good season down um, from, from their point of view. I think they were, you know, some could say they were unlucky to lose. Um, myself and, and Paul were in commentary there, and you know, just felt that you know their lack of quality really cost them. But I, I just think their quality down really shone through uh, in the in the semi final win over the Mitchells. I think you know Woods there, with Conor Osborne, Shevlin, obviously Owen Osborne coming off the bench, you know, so. I think that was a huge, huge factor on their victory. Just to have that little bit more quality about them. Do you think Carl, having seen Tor close hand, do you think it's more about the individuals, or is it going to be about the team structure of Landlier? Um, yeah, look, I think that that Landlier team Dan has been a team in the making for the last two years. I think this is this is, this is definitely I think Mark's second year. Mark's second year, yeah. So you know, this is a team that's. You know, two years as such in the making, um, and and when Mark was with Glide, and uh, you know, I think it's the same sort of setup. You know, he's making sure that they're defensively sound, um, before anything else happens up an attack, and um, and they will be defensively sound on on Saturday, um, and just on the 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 game of the weekend when um, the Finn Bars are playing with John Mitchell's. Uh, we spoke about Mitchell's protecting that D and trying. The very best to, to um, stop the Finbars attacking them narrow, you know, and, and through the centre. And um, I think the Finbars continue to do it for a while. Um, okay, you know, yeah. sort of and, and yeah. they they kind of had to had to change tack a wee bit. I felt um, because the missions were getting a lot of joy in stopping them. You know, if you watch it back, um, it took them an awful long time to, to, to break them down, and it was more of a, of a high ball. They, they kind of you know they skipped over that, right, that defensive right. line into, into into William Woods yeah um, and then only for David Anderson the Michels keeper on the day um, you know he pulled off two or three excellent saves um, but it was more that high ball and, and not the running power of Liam Shevlin or you know the you know Hugh McGrain or Connor Osborne um, you know it was more at the start of the game it was more of that 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 dig pass or the the, the fisted pass over that defensive line, and um, so look, I think I think they need to learn from that uh, definitely because it's going, they're going to be coming up something very similar on Saturday. So I think definitely the Finbars need to learn from that um, if they're to get uh, a wee bit more joy and, and start the game better. Um, but you know, like I said at the start, there Dunleer are, are very very well organised yeah. and they they're a team. I think I'm sure Mark Gilson and we've seen with his previous teams that. He has them well organised, and everyone knows their job. And to me, it's no coincidence that they've they've, they've made it th this far. And um, you know, I think it's going to be it's going to be tight, it's going to be close. But 
Um, I think definitely the, the, the bars will have to learn a yeah. lesson from the last game. If they're, if they're to get one over, then they are. And you've seen that as well, Opie. Yeah. <clears throat> in, in that middle field battle, like the partnership Lanlear have, you've seen the partnership Ogi that they've kind of formed now the Finn Bars in Darren McConnell is injured, he might make it back at the weekend. There's a massive clash there right in the middle of the field with Hawkins and Mulroy, mm -hmm. with Conan if he comes back. Liam Shevlin's now kind of in the middle of the field. Yeah, Kira the Markey, Josh Crosby, so there's a bit of, that's kind of sums it up. There's a bit of a, they know exactly what you're going to get with Dunlear and then it's kind of, it's hard to know what way it's going to team up for. Mm -hmm. I think that middle tour, that yeah. middle tour will be a proper battle ground. Really Just good. even for the Finn Bars, if, if Hugh Osborne goes back into that as well, yeah, the star yeah. position is another massive boost for them. Um, the, those guys you named, they're, they're so comfortable on the ball. Again, the Mitchell's going to help that with the long kick. I don't know how many marks or clean catches uh, Sheffield got, but he wasn't alone. And, and he's not all about, but I'll take it on. It was coming off, it was off either shoulder or lads, nothing. But as you said, uh, Carl, they just got so far, mm. and it was like, now what do we do, you know? But they learned the lesson and they changed, obviously. But, uh, yeah, that made me feel that hard. Like, Hawkins and Mulroy could be great, that'd yeah, be brilliant. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, you could have, you've, got a, you've got a big man, he's a power player, and you have the kind of more classier footballer in Mulroy. And it'd be really interesting how they handle it. Um, because Glyde made a change, they brought another big man in whose name escapes me now. Brian Duffy, maybe? Yeah, Duffy, yeah. they brought Duffy in, and it troubled, Glyde, uh, troubled Langlier for the first 20 25 minutes. Because Langlier went behind in that game, they're yes. used to getting that lead yes. and protecting yeah. it. Yeah, and I thought that's what might rattle them, and I think uh, Glyde did their business right doing that. But they just held firm and they got level at half time. Might have been a different team talk had they been two, three, four down. But it didn't get to that. They got in at half time as a, as a draw, so the change wasn't needed. Yeah. And they trusted the system and they got the win. But um, yeah, Shevlin, Shevlin, yeah, I tell you, great game in the Mitchells. Just from around the middle of the park. Yeah. So uh, the boys will have to work cut out for them. On the he does a lot of the dirty work. You'd find Liam, yeah. Shevlin, you know, it does a lot of the dirty work. You know, dogged really is what it just Like, you remember last year he was playing in the senior semi final and playing very well. He was in the, like, they were so close last year to Dreadnoughts. And do you find, Stephen, the water breaks have helped this year in terms of breaking momentum or even yeah, getting well, more coaching? Or the working, as you say, like a breaking momentum, the work for some teams, the work don't work for others. Look, it's. I think at times down a bit too much has been taken out of them. I mean, the rule states it's 90 seconds. Um, you know, sometimes, look, we've been waiting at the country, you know, one or two minutes, you know, to, to pass people three minutes sometimes for, for play to resume. Um, it's definitely made a difference to the game. We've seen a lot of mini halves develop in, in, in 20 minutes of football, you know. Um, it's interesting. Will I continue it? Probably not. Probably not. Yeah, Olga, would you? What do you, would you agree? Would you? Um, I don't know. It's one of those ones where before you before the ball is thrown in, both teams know it's coming. Yeah. So the complaining retrospectively, oh, broke our momentum. Or get on with it. Yeah. Well, that's the way yeah. I'd say it's there now. I don't know whether you keep it or not. That's up for debate. But if it's here now, just get on with it. If you're six up, be twelve up when you come back on. You're six down, get back in the game. Whichever way it is, but it's there on the second stone. Get on with it. That's the way I look. So another thing we have to look at, these, these two parishes are very close, mm. like there are two teams that are on top of it, they play minor together, mm. and then you kind of have that sort of, well, I, well no, I'll say that until the end, but these, these players know each other inside out, and that adds to it. Mm. Like, do you feel, Ogie, that's going to really kind of push another team, like there's going to be no, like, there's going to be hundreds of supporters there on the day, mm. you're going to be parading around, but it's going to be all about the players and all about like the man you're marking and yeah. that grudge. Yeah, I, I think, I think for um, spectators it will be. I think um, when you when you line up your matchups, you won't want to lose to your to your whoever's marking you or vice versa. I think if the game is close, which I, I suspect it will be, uh, I don't I don't you, you'll just be focused on doing your job, you know, and getting on with it, whether it's getting out front and winning the ball and scoring, getting out front and stopping your man scoring. I don't think that will come into it. I think if there's a, a gap, it'll be like, <laughs> I never liked you anyway. Yeah, it, yeah. Could be, it could get that way, where if a team gets four, five, six ahead, it might get, it start getting a little bit niggly and yeah, yeah. go out to go home to uh, my cousin's friend who's also a brother of. <laughs> yeah, well, well Lawrence, Ma Lawrence McIntyre and Mark John right. have played for. The opposition, yeah. that's right, yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, I was talking to Larry and he's nothing but good things to say about the Finn Bars, 
But he's mad to win. He's mad to win the championship. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> so I'm really into that with your will. Yeah. But yeah. yeah he, Do you agree with that, Stephen? Like, is it going to be? Yeah, well, it'll, it'll be an intense game, Dan. Nothing between the teams. I think whoever emerges victorious, there will be score to in it. Stuff. Yeah, and then you also have uh, what I was going to say for I'll bring you in on this one. It's kind of like Toto are the big brother, they're coming down and they, they've overlooked probably Len Lear for so long. Is it now the little brother's chance just to get to? It's he's growing up shining, and yeah, yeah. yeah, just listening to the lads there. It'll be interesting to see how the actual game pans out. You spoke about Dun Lear's maybe defensive mentality. Interesting to see if Toto went ahead early. How, how will that evolve? And they are, will they stick to their runs in a final, their first final? Phoenix, will they stick to their game plan that they've had all year? Will they be composed enough to do that? Uh, say they win two, three points down at half time. Are they going to stick to that structure then? Um, There's a lot of pressure on the final. Like, yes, does, does the, do, the, do you stick to that? That's, that's the thing. A lot of these young Dunlear guys, maybe some of the older lads who would have played in finals uh, maybe 10 years ago. But uh, there's a lot of lads for first first proper big day, and mm. you mentioned only a hundred supporters. Yeah, we know that, but still going to be marching behind the band. Still going to be the nerves. Yeah. I know the week maybe suiting all the players to just go about their business, doing their training. Uh, the week gap will probably suit a team maybe who hasn't been to a final yeah, yeah. in a long time. They don't have too much time to to think about it, you know. But from my perspective, looking at defensive teams. It's just interesting when they go behind the games. That's really when you're going to do they trust their manager that he has set them up the right way that they're going to get back in. But now they did do that against Lloyd. I think they had to win in the conditions maybe in the second half yeah. to kind of help that as well. Um, but yeah, it's really, as we said, maybe the individual flair or the William Woods or the Osbournes against your team ethos of the of the year. I, I, I think the so you, you, you give us a first prediction. I think then. the structure and the team ethos, uh, rather than the individual flair, may, may come out with the day. Father's not like you. I know. It's not like you. You're going against all your, your, uh, so your own we, instincts. We, we, we go with, uh, with Lanier to, to, to Carl, I have a feeling what the two boys are going to go with. Carl, are you going to upset the apple cart here? No, I don't think so. <laughs> um, no, like I said, um, Mark Elson has them very, very well organised. Um, and, you know, just to back up a frass there about the, the you know, trust in the manager, the team ethos, I don't think that will change in a, in a final. I think, if anything, it, it'll, you know, it, it'll, they'll be happy with it because that's got them there. Um, so if the bars go two or three points up, I think Langlair will stay nice and calm and, and I fancy them to. Win, yeah, but a tight game. Lads, you're, you're, yeah, land there, land there. Yeah, yeah, I just, I, I'd be interested in the, the lineup. You know, we talk about the matchups, but I'd be interested in the lineup. Like, all the subs that come on, the forward subs that come on uh, for land there. I don't know if they all scored, I think they did, but if they didn't, they, they were all involved. They were all in the semi final, yeah. yeah they were yeah, all involved. Yeah. So, will he, will he change the lineup? Does that, you know, and then will that upset the apple card? I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I stick with land there. Yeah. Right, so there we have it, the first preview. And if there's any total fans, I tried my best to get one. Um, but no, four votes for Lanier here in the Anglo Pinters Junior Championship Final Preview.